Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, today we're gonna do things a little different. Um, we are making a wreath, but as you can see, we're in the kitchen. <laughs> my office is all set up to do a tutorial later on um, for bath bombs. And my kitchen table is set up to do an Easter tablescape. So the only place left to make a wreath is the kitchen. So <laughs> double duty. So I've got all of my um, gadgets here along with a box full of stuff. I'm still gonna take you step by step and show you exactly how to make this wreath. Um, with every little detail, you're just gonna see all of this in the background. So anyways, um, let's get started on this wreath. Um, it's super exciting because we're working with my favorite little creatures, butterflies. I've had a lot of people ask about butterflies and as a butterfly lover, I couldn't get through spring. Even though we just started, it feels like time is just flying by without butterflies. So we will be working with that. And this is gonna be a really cute burlap wreath. And so um, other than that, let's get started on all of this. So before we get started, I just want to answer some of your comments um, like this, instead of just typing it out. Um, I have been getting a lot of beautiful, beautiful comments that just really warms my heart and just makes me want to continue to do these wreath tutorials. You guys are telling me exactly what you guys need. I'm listening. I'm hoping I can deliver everything you guys want. The one thing that I see often and it's really heartbreaking and I've dealt with this myself is that people are really unsure of their own talents. Um, let me just say this. First of all, if you are attempting wreath making, congratulations. So many people will never attempt this craft. And so the fact that you even have taken that step forward, you're already winning in this department. You're willing to at least try. And for those who are like, you know, how should I, how should I um, put together my, um, my wreath? Should it be in little curls or should it be, you know, the um, bow method or weave method? How should I do this? I have said this time and time again, there is absolutely no, no rules when it comes to creativity. The p painters, when they paint, they just let whatever it is come out and that's how they create. Any kind of creator does that. And if, like I said, the fact that you're willing to make a wreath, you are a creator. You have an imagination. You have the desire to create something with your hands. So there are no rules. So make sure that that is your number one thing that you never let go of. Creativity is your own. Nobody else nobody can create like you can. You are one of a kind, you are special, you can create your own magic, okay? So just remember that when you go into wreath making, although we do see stuff that we're like, man, I really want it to look exactly like that because that is what I want. Remember, no matter what, it's so hard to get identical uh, crafts, you know, even when we try to like go out and buy everything that they use to do it, it's always going to have our flair to it. And that's what makes it great. Like I love when I, you know, see somebody and I'm in, or see somebody's craft and I'm inspired, but then I'm like, let me put my own twist on it. Let your own twist be your thing. Like I'm gonna put a little Sandra on that, you know, or I'm gonna put a little bit of a shell on that or whatever. Just be happy that you get to put your own flair on it. Um, again, that's a part of creativity and people are going to want that flair that you offer. Um, and I know a lot of people too, they're like, well, you know, what would I charge for this? I don't, I don't think it's good enough to sell or any, you know, all of the negative thoughts, anything will sell. I promise you, like I, I've said time and time again, there are a billion people in the world. You put it onto a marketplace, you put it into your community, there is someone that is going to want what you have to offer because they themselves could not create the beautiful creation that you did, you know? So just keep those things in mind um, and you don't have to have everything figured out. I have a, 
I have a rough estimate of what's going to happen today. Meaning I've got flowers. I've got three rolls. I don't know how many rolls this wreath is going to take, but I'm prepared. So I think, but just have fun with it. That's what I want people to see is that you don't have to have this all figured out. There are so many times prior to me doing this where I would have a frame and I'm like, let's just see what happens. You know, I've got all these random trinkets that I've collected all, you know, from garage sales everywhere else. And I'm like, let's throw that baby on there and let's throw that. And then I'm like, eh, none of that didn't work. You know, so you don't have to have things figured out. Let the inspiration come to you. If you start forcing it, like if you're wanting to make wreath making a business, like if you go into this, like these are going to be products that I'm going to make money off of. I have to. Um, and you, you're going to go into wreath making stressed out because to you, this is a source of income. Yes. Wreath making is definitely a great source of income and let it be your business, but go into it with joy and love and just be like, Hey, I want this to be my business. I want to have fun with it though, because you don't want it to all strictly be business. And I've got to create the perfect wreath because I've got to sell it for this much. I have to have all the perfect things. That's not the way to go into a wreath making business or for any craft for that matter. Um, just let it come to you and just know that you are now making a product with your flair that you want to offer to the world. So just again, have, have fun. And, um, Fly by the seat of your pants. I do. I've got four different ribbons. Heck, if I know all of, if all of these ribbons are going to go onto this thing, um, we're just going to see what happens. But I just wanted to do a little bit of, you know, inspiration talk, do a little bit of an inspiration talk for you guys, because I see it in the, in the comments. And I know how I felt when I first started, I was that I was like beating myself up. I'm like, it doesn't look like that. You know, I've only got dollar store mesh or, you know, I don't have all these things. Girl, none that mattered. You know, it was just my own mindset that was making me feel like I wasn't good enough. Ever, every time like I showed a read, somebody was like, oh my God, you created that. I'm like, yeah, you like it? And you know, they were just so excited. And you know, I had to get out of my own head. I still do not make a perfect wreath by any means. Um, I just like to have fun. That's it. I just like to have fun. And so um, that's my motivation speak for today. So we are going to go ahead and get started. And I did do a little prepping, just a little, because I know I still have a lot of beginners that are like, show me step by step. And I definitely will. I will show you um, the things that I have prepped. I will go into detail about that. And, um, other than that, there's nothing left to do, but get started. All right. So here is, um, kind of like the bird's eye view of all the things that I have. I've got some more stuff on the floor. We'll, I'll bring those up in just a few moments. Um, so let's start with the basic. Let me just show you the wreath frame and the mesh that we're going to be working with. And then I'll explain what I have going on. Look at my schnazzy new mat. I paid for a whole dollar at a um, vintage barn sale. Yes, it was in a barn. I dug it out. It's mine <laughs> for a dollar. <laughs> so here's my new mat. Okay, I have, I want to show you. I know it's already prepped. Um, don't worry, I'm going to explain it to you. Okay, so this is the wreath frame that I have. It is from the dollar store. Now, if your dollar store does not have the wreath frame that you are wanting, you can go onto the dollartree.com and you can order frames. They used to require you to buy things by the cases where you're gonna end up with like 48 little bunnies and you're like, what am I gonna do with all this? You now can just purchase, I think their minimum is like three. And if you're into making reads, you're going to use these three in a heartbeat. So go on to the dollartree.com. If I, I know a lot of places, like I live in a small town and even my dollar tree, you can have things shipped to your dollar tree and it's free. So you don't have to pay that shipping, which is fantastic. Cause sometimes shipping is like the worst. So this is an 18 inch wreath frame again, that I got from the dollar tree. I'm going to toss this in the garbage 
And this is what it is. It's got the two, it's only got the two sections, like right here. And I went ahead and put my pipe cleaners on here. Now, when you guys see this and you're like, well, how did you know to put pipe cleaners where you did? I didn't. <laughs> okay, so I just was like, yeah, this is where they're gonna go. So <laughs> I did one where this, where this bracket is, I did one and I did it around two of these little bars. And then I went to the center and I went up onto the two top bars. And then I went back down to where this other one is and did two. And I just rotated. I'll be honest with you right now. I have no idea how many are actually even on here. So let me count. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We've got 16 pipe cleaners. You would think I would prep ahead, but you know, this is, this is wreath making 101. Uh, so um, this, I've got 16 um, in case you're like, well, I want to know how far apart they are. I brought my handy dandy tape measure and they are roughly three inches apart. So I went every three inches in case you have a bigger frame or a smaller frame. Again, 18 inches, 16, I believe pipe cleaners I said, gave a good twist to them. And then ta-da, this is what I ended up with. There was no rhyme or reason why I picked that. I just was like, let's see what happens. Um, if this works out well, I'll write it down. It'll be like a recipe. I'm like, ooh, that worked. So, <laughs> and then I'll know for next time. So now it's on to our, um, this is gonna be a poly burlap mesh. I picked this up at Michael's. These are normally, they run from like $9.99 up to I think $14.99. I got this at half off, so I paid five doll hairs for it. And um, I don't know how many we're gonna need, so I got three rolls with me right now. We are going to, ooh, I like the texture of this. This is definitely not, if you've never used this, this is not a grabby mesh like the deco mesh um, that you've used from the dollar store or whatever, this can and will fray, just to let you know. Um, I did read in the comments where somebody said, you know, you can get the Rust-Oleum clear coat. And when you do something like this, before you add any of your trinkets, spray it down with that and that should help with the unraveling. I have never done that. I'm going to try that for sure but um, I don't have it today, so, oh well. Uh, but that's what I was told. So we are going to cut uh, 16 of these in 30 inch sections, okay? So I've got my mat, of course, which is only 23. Um, so we're gonna do this, we're gonna do 23, and then we're gonna go up seven. All right. And I have this rotary cutter that I really like. And so what happens is you squeeze this, you do that little doodad right there, you poke it out and then it holds it. I do have a one from the Dollar Tree that I'm actually really loving um, down in my box somewhere. So if you're like, oh, I have seen those at the Dollar Tree, do they work? You know what, that's a long, okay. Never mind the 30 inches, don't cut, don't cut, backtrack. That was a lot for 30 inches because we're gonna do a bow method or like the, the scrunching method. We're gonna do 23 inches. Okay, I was thinking 30, but that's just way too long. My mat knew what we were gonna do. I just didn't. Okay, we're gonna do 16 of these. And like I said, I have, I'm just gonna throw these on the floor just to get them out of the way since we're working with limited space here. So we're gonna do 23 inches. Remember I said 30, but I lied. We're gonna do 23. And, oh, you guys were asking about the scissors that you see right here. Okay, these are some scissors. I think they go, so, um, Oh, good Lord. It's the tool brand that starts with the M, Milwaukee. That's what these are. They're Milwaukee scissors. These are heavy duty. 
Um, I'm not quite sure what that little dinky thing is there for, but I know right here is a wire cutter. Um, my boyfriend gave these to me because I'm always needing like heavy duty scissors. And so he's like, try these. And I just fell in love because they can do almost anything that I need them to do. So I really love them. They're, I'm not easy on my stuff. So they actually um, hold up very well, you know, cause I, I'm terrible when it comes to that stuff. So, oh, and this is 10 or 19 feet. This um, roll is. Now, if you don't have this type of um, mesh, this burlap mesh, any kind of mesh will do. You do not have to use a burlap mesh. I am using this because it was on sale and that, that's just why. <laughs> so it was on sale. And um, so if you have a different color, this is all gonna work the same. There is definitely no difference. Um, just cut, you know, the 23 inches um, of, you know, in, in little sections. And I'll see how many I get out of here. I'm, for, let me just say this. I am terrible at math. So, and as you can see, I thought I was going to cut 30 inches. I'm cutting in 23 inches. If you're good at math or if you just have the energy to calculate, okay, well, 23 inches, how many is actually in the thing, in the roll? Um, great. I can't, I, I'm just not even going to do it. I'm just going to buy a couple extra rolls and then just see what happens. But I think we've got, okay, so I'm actually going to lay this right here. So I think I'm gonna cut this little flip, like how it's pressed right there. I'm just gonna cut this end off just to make it easier to work with for me. Um, you don't have to, it's just my preference. I am gonna save it in case I need it for a craft though. <laughs> All right, um, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got ten. We need sixteen. So two rolls is what I recommend that you buy. And again, that's if your roll is 19 feet. You want to take a screenshot? Go for it. There you go. Um, and then you can use this for so many different projects. This isn't just for wreath making, I'll tell you that. Um, I've used this kind of stuff for all kinds of things. This would be a cute um, table runner. There's just so many things um, that you can do with this. So I'm not mad that I have extras of this, this um, style of mesh. We're just about done, and then I'll show you the pattern. Today was the, the last day of this incredible sale that they had at Michael's. I hope y'all were able to at least get one little thing. Um, they had flowers 40 or 50% off, I can't remember, but some of them were just a buck, and so I was super excited. Um, to grab that and then of course these little butterflies they weren't on sale, but I had a coupon so I was able to get them. I I um, am a bargain shopper for no other reason except I don't have a ton of money to go out and do all this like I have the budget so in order for me to be able to do all of this I've really got to watch the sales and everything like that. All right, I think I need just one more. I lost count, but that's the beauty of this. My favorite thing to do would be to sit down, throw something on TV, sit down with my wreath in the middle of the living room, get it all sprawled out, make a mess, and create while I was just relaxing in front of the TV. All right, so now we've got our frame and we've got our little pieces right here. Okay, this is what we're going to do. See how it curls up this way? 
we're gonna flip it over like this, all right? No matter what kind of mesh you are working with, flip it over. We're, we've done, I've done this technique before, it's, it's pretty easy. So you're gonna put your palm, like the end of your palms, on the edge of this piece right here to kind of hold it down. And then you're just gonna scrunch and you're gonna wanna keep it towards the center. Like, you know, keep it, you know, even. Don't let it get wild because it will. And then once you get to about the end, instead of letting it flip over or do its thing or whatever, keep it kind of tucked so that the edges stay tucked under. And then you're gonna have it like this. And then we're gonna kind of tuck that under and gather it. So this is what you're gonna end up with. This is what it's gonna look like. We're gonna bring this over here and pick one and place it in. And give it a couple of good twists. There we go. This is how it looks. You, If yours is up and down, it's fine. If it's side to side, it's fine. Just get it on there. And we're gonna do this for the entire frame. All right, see this is why I like being in my office. <laughs> okay, so just grab, we're gonna walk, walk our fingers forward and then like that, okay? And then we're gonna put it here. And once this starts to become full, the wreath frame, once we start filling this up, these are going to hold on to each other and really fill it up. I know that like, see like how this one slid over, which is totally fine. You're just gonna move it back. And again, we'll, re we'll be able to readjust and um, you know, put it in the way we want and all that stuff once it gets a little bit more full. While it's still kind of empty like this, things will move around. It's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll go over that, we'll fix it in the long run or yeah we'll fix it so again do this okay there we go all right try to free up some of this space and for those who are like, okay, I get it, like very simple. Um, feel free to fast forward in this video. I don't get offended. Um, like I said, I'm doing this for beginners. So I'm gonna kind of twist this a little bit. Just, hmm, let's see, I can do it side by side because I kind of want to show you how it'll look when we start to fill up each section. So instead of it having going like this, I'm gonna have it go in the same direction as my frame. This is just my choice. You don't have to have it go like this, okay? So here we go, you see that? Now I know you can see the hot pink um, pipe cleaner. That's not gonna be an issue in a little bit. Okay, and I'm just grabbing. You don't have to flick it all the way out if you don't want to. If you're getting the hang of it, you're like, oh, I got this. Go ahead and scrunch it how you feel. All right, I'm gonna start opening these up. Now, there are frames that already have, I guess you can, like the pipe cleaners or they already have the little gadgets on there to hold down your um, mesh. Those are um, awesome too. I just, again, I live in a very small town. I can't find that around here yet. I tend to find those during the holidays. So I usually try to um, stock up, but last holiday, you know, with COVID and everything, um, we were not able to find just like the, the plain ones. They were all like the Christmas style ones. So. I still have them, but I'll, ha I'll be able to break those out during Christmas time, which is my favorite time to make a wreath. I'll tell you what, I love that kind of stuff during the holidays. See how I did that? I kind of helped it along. Um, 
All right, so don't worry again if your pipe cleaners are traveling around the, the frame. Just make sure you get one in in every single one. They'll eventually start to hug each other. And this one, we are not going to do a centerpiece. Um, I decided that we're gonna do the bows. And you always don't, like you don't always have to have just one bow on your wreath. You can do multiple bows all the way around your wreath, which is super fun. And we may or may not do that today. We'll see what happens. Um, ooh, I'm gonna get my squats in trying to get my uh, burlap. Not that I do squats. <laughs> so. That was just something fun to say. All right, there. Still working with this. Um, I know that this is kind of like, ugh, this is, I get it, boring part of this show. That's why I'm trying to fill it with like lots of information for you guys. Um, let's see, what information can I share with you guys? Um, Good Lord, Sandra, thank you. Trying to give you guys some helpful tips. Um, oh, if you guys are watching my very first video or if you have watched my very first video, I did, I put on there in the um, description box, I get the sound is terrible. I get that. That was not, even though it's on YouTube, I had no idea that all of y'all wanted to watch that video. Um, I would have dressed better <laughs> had I known. I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, I, I totally know it. I'm super sorry. You know, I and I don't have the video. I deleted that off my phone like probably the minute after I posted it, but I can't go back and fix it. So super sorry if you left a comment that you couldn't hear. I know, I'm so sorry. Nothing I can do. All right, here we go. It's really starting to look cutesy and full. So you're not seeing the, the frame. Um, don't worry about that. And even if you have a different color frame, because there are different color frames, um, if you have a different one and you were worried about it, you're good. It's not gonna show through with all of the stuff that we're gonna add to this. Um, I have a cute little bird's nest that we're gonna do. And let's see. Yeah. So, yep, this is just the boring part of the, sh of the show. Um, and I would love to see your guys' reads. You can always send it to me, Facebook, Instagram. And I think there's, like I said, a way to show it to me here on YouTube. I'm just trying to tuck this little end because I'm curious to what everybody's making. All right, we're just about done. I've got a small handful left. I hope you guys are really liking the Easter tutorials too. Um, I've got a couple more Easter um, crafts coming up. And I say crafts because there might be like another wreath, but I think I'm gonna do a couple of really cute crafts. Um, again, I know not everybody celebrates Easter, so let me just put that out there. But if you do, I will have um, a couple of more crafts coming your way. I really had no idea that Easter was on the fourth, whatever Sunday that is, third, fourth, fifth, something like that. Um, so I will have those up probably Wednesday. Um, today is Sunday, so in a couple of days, I will have those up. Um, again, I just had no idea. And if you guys are on, if you guys are watching like my other tutorials and you guys see items that you would like to purchase, let me just put this in there. Let me just plug my video with my shop. Um, you guys can go on to my Etsy shop and shop for some of my products that I have on there that you guys are seeing. And if you guys don't see it, you guys can always ask about it. Um, so this is fraying just a little bit. 
I'm not really seeing too much, so I, I'm pretty happy with it. Although if I did have the clear coat spray, um, I would definitely try that. Um, don't you, I, I don't know how like a spray glue would do, so please don't do that um, unless you've researched it and you know for a, a fact, but um, I definitely wanna try the clear coat Rust-Oleum on one of these reads that I do because I'm, I'm just curious to see how that works on the wreath. So now that I'm getting, I'm just double checking to make sure that I've got all of my pipe cleaners with one. I just have one left to do. Um, now that I'm seeing it, I, you know, I was thinking that, you know, oh, you need to adjust them to if they're gonna go this way, vertical or horizontal. I was thinking, oh, I should rearrange them, but you know, I'm just gonna let them be the way that they are. I'm not gonna go in and try to readjust them or anything like that. So as you can see, this is a pretty easy method to do. Um, like this. It's one of my other favorite methods besides weaving, although there is cutting involved in this one. It's just something that really fills the wreath frame up and looks good and super easy, in my opinion. Okay, so we've got our complete, I'm just gonna kind of adjust this one just a hair. And if you do, if you wanna go through and adjust them, feel free. Um, and just kind of making sure that you know the wreath frame is covered and whatnot so okay just bring everything up make it poofy make it all stand up show off the ruffles all right there we go now i double checked i you know because sometimes i do i like to go you know back onto the, you know flip it over and make sure that every pipe cleaner has something in it because I have been known to skip. So we are going to leave the pipe cleaners exactly the way they are. I'm not going to mess with them. Um, the reason why I don't like to go ahead and immediately cut them is because I don't know how this is gonna go. So in case I wanna add something to them, maybe I might, maybe, maybe we might even add ribbon to this, who knows? Um, that's why I like to leave them the way that they are. Um, if you are concerned that the pipe cleaners are not going to hold very well, once your wreath is complete, you can go back through and secure each piece with um, uh, zip ties if you want. But for right now, this is what we're gonna do. And now, let's see, we're gonna grab some of our flowers and I'm just gonna kind of send this off to the side. I want it to work with like a pinky, yellow, um, white, color so this is the bunch that I have so I have these cute little wispy flowers right here I have some tulips I have are these like carnation these are I don't know what these are these are cute <laughs> these are cute and these are cute all right so <laughs> I have all of these and now we're just going to figure out how to place them onto our wreath. Like I said, I didn't do a whole bunch of prep, so that's why you're gonna see kind of like a lull in the video where, you know, this is happening like the boring stuff because I want you to see see this in all of its entirety. Um, see, these scissors rock. Like you just, of course, right now, <laughs> it's not gonna show you, there we go. Um, just gonna cut a few off because I'm gonna do mix and match and I'll show you how to add flowers to something like this. Um, how to tuck them in and make them sweet and cute. Do a few tulips. And if I don't end up using all of these flowers, it's totally fine. I will end up using them at a later point in time. So I'm not worried if I overcut, you know, too many flowers. Just kind of scooch these up. And like I said, I think I might want to add more ribbon than just a bow. And we'll see how that works out. All right. 
You can get really super cute flowers from the Dollar Tree. I do have a bunch of those. These, again, I happened to grab at Michael's because they were on sale. I think I paid, like for the tulips, I know I paid a dollar for them. They were in, they were $1.99 originally. Then they were, oh, it's missing a flower. Um, then they were 50% uh, off. So still great bargain. Goodness gracious. There we go. And you don't have to do multiple um, styles of flowers if you don't feel like it. Again, this is just something I had. Oh, these are from the dollar. Oh, I'm wrong. But they were, again, a dollar. Because these were the dollar ninety nine ones at Michael's. So we're going to be gluing these in. So make sure that you have your hot glue gun already prepping. Um, I have my little one with me my little trusty handy dandy glue gun right here. So we're gonna start gluing these flowers in. And if you've ever watched my videos before, you know I kinda like to lay them out just to get an idea of what we are working with. Then I go back through and I glue. All right, so we're gonna add a little bit of extra greenery with this right here. Just give it a couple of pops of really cuteness and make it really springy. Okay, there we go. So now we're going to kind of see where we want our flowers. I, I'm gonna say it one more time. No right, no wrong way to do this. Now, see where we have our um, pipe cleaner right there. I'm just gonna lay a flower kind of like on top of that, just to kind of do it in the center, um, just to see. And that's why like, we'll, we'll be able to cover up our pipe cleaners because we're gonna add um, cute little decorative pieces. When we go to lay our greenery and floral bah, pieces in, oh my goodness, um, we will cut those down, tuck them in the back, you know, the little, pokey part we're going to tuck it around and then um you'll never be able to see this so let's do this too and you can lay them right on top as well you don't have to kind of tuck them in you can lay them right on top if you want which i may or may not do i'm just kind of going to you know let's 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 do something real fast and just kind of get the color scheme going that you want all right This is gonna be cute and then I'll show you the um, the ribbon that we're gonna be working with so that's what I'm doing right now I'm just laying down I will bring the camera over to kind of show you roughly what I have and I'm only gonna do like kind of like a, a half moon of, of flowers we're not gonna do the whole thing if you want to please feel free to do so. So we're, I'm just laying them again in a half moon shape. I do recommend if you do this step, if you just lay before you, before you um, glue, if you're like, this is exactly how I love it. Take a picture. When you go, when you take this all off and then you go to glue it down, it will not look the same. I promise. So do that. Um, let me go ahead and bring the camera around so you can see what this looks like right now because I can't really lift it. Okay, so here's a better view of what the wreath frame is looking like. And as you can see, I just have this laid on top. Um, I have not done anything. I have not glued it or anything like that. I've just laid it on top like that. And now that I'm like, okay, this is how I want it to go. I'm gonna go back through, cut the excess stem off and we're gonna start gluing it down. I will show you what I'm doing as well. And then we can start adding some of these cute little butterflies and the little bird's nest, how sweet. Okay, so like I said, we've got 
the flowers. Now I'm going to remove them and try to keep them in the same layering sequence that I had on here. It's going to kind of lay like that. It's going to go like that. And now that I know the side that I want my flowers on, I'm going to cut down my pipe cleaners and tuck them into the back and I'll show you in just a moment. Okay. Let's do this and do this. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Oh, one more. So I'm gonna open this up, grab this pipe cleaner and cut down as far as I, to the twist. It's gonna look like that. It's gonna be like a little tiny little pink and then bend one side back, bend the other side and tuck it. Because if those things are still sticking up, if you get your finger on that, it will, it will get you. So I'm gonna do probably five of them just for right now. Cause like I said, I don't know if I'm gonna add ribbon and I don't wanna cut those down if I'm going to. So this is just where my flowers are going to lay. Make sure not to cut your mesh. All right, just kind of tuck. So, and then if you want, this is a good time to rearrange. All right, and I'll tuck and I'll grab this one right here and then that will be it. My glue gun is heated up. And then I do have my other glue gun right here that I absolutely love. I've said time and time again, this is screaming hot. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn that one on just in case I wanna use that one. All right, now it's time to lay. So I am going to actually cut the stem probably to right there. I want a very short stem like that. So in case you were wondering how close do you, how short do you make the stems? Um, what is this about? About an inch, a little over an inch. So there you go. And I'm going to kind of just lay it on. That's what I'm gonna do. And you can kind of tuck your, your stem through the fabric. So I'm gonna put a little bit of glue onto the stem. Let me show you. Got it like that. Oh, see that? And then I'm just gonna put it through the mesh. So see, no stem because I tucked it in to the mesh. You can do this with any kind of mesh. Tuck your stems in like that. Oop. Well, let me put that one back together. All right, I'm gonna cut that down just a hair. Pull the leaf up. I like to keep the greenery on it. So I'm gonna pull the leaf up to the top, I've got my piece right there. I'm gonna go ahead and glue, glue the end again. Okay, get it nice and gobby. And just ah, wind it through another piece. And then we're just gonna work our way to right here, cause that's where I cut the last um, piece. So I have this section, which is roughly about five or six, um, of the sections. So I'm gonna leave. And I add some long pieces to like this. Maybe I will adjust the camera because I would like for you guys to see exactly what I'm doing. Let me bring you all down here to have a look. Okay, I think this is much a much better angle. Here, let me show you what I have so far. See how I've got it all tucked into my, my um, mesh? So let me just move my glue gun over yonder. And so you guys can see. So I've got the this, and I'm just gonna tuck it kind of down into the, to the mesh. There we go. Gonna Pull this up and cut 
my stem down like that. We're gonna give it a little bit of glue. Then I think I'm gonna put this one closest to my um, my pipe cleaner. So it kind of keeps, it's kind of hidden, but we're still gonna build all the way up. I hope that you guys are able to see exactly how easy this can be. Um, when it comes to adding flowers. So yeah, just find a little sp spot for you to tuck it in and, and it, it'll be fine. Again, like I said, you can do this with a different kind of a mesh and then just go up. Perfect. I'm really loving how the, f I'm loving these flower wreaths and I've really been into the um, grape vine wreaths Oh, they're coming out so stinking cute. And I just am falling in love with them. So we're gonna be doing another tutorial coming soon with the uh, grapevine reeds. And I think we're gonna be working with sunflowers. All right, kind of tuck that over here. Let's get some of these tulips in here. And then we're gonna stand this wreath up here in just a few seconds once I add this last, this one tulip, just to kind of get an idea of how it's coming along. Because it's different when it's laying down as uh, opposed to when you lift it up. So I'm gonna let that glue just sit right there. And then let's lift it up. Oop, not quite what I wanted. Hold on one second. There we go. And the glue's not quite dried yet. So we'll just let it hang here for a second. And I know you can also put this up on a stand and um, add your flowers that way too. If you wanna go ahead and just do it this way so you can get a better view, um, definitely do so. But here, let me just grab this camera so you can see um, how it's coming along so far. Super cute. And then we'll add our butterflies across it. I'm super excited about that. And I know a few of you guys are gonna to be too. Um, and then we'll move on to our ribbon. I will be using my Bodabra today. I um, see that a few, guys, a few of you guys have also grabbed a Bodabra. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. Um, it does come with, in case you're just like, that's not something that I feel confident in working with. Just so you know, it does come with a DVD tutorial um, so you guys can learn how to use your Bodabra. Um, I just love it. It just gives you that extra set of hands when you need it, when you're trying to create a bow. It allows you to do multiple um different ribbons, like multiple ribbons, um, because there's no way in heck I would be able to hold the ribbons, you know, with all these different, uh, different ones. And that's why I really, really like the Bodabra. Um, you can get it on Amazon. I'll be putting a link to, to a Bodabra, uh, in case you're interested. All right. We are just about done. And again, for all you advanced folks that um, love the channel, I so appreciate it. And I know that this is kind of like the part where you're just like, uh, can we speed it up? But we are taking our time because remember, there's tons of beginners. All right, and I think I'm loving the flower pieces. Um, where they are at, of course, it looks completely different than what I had uh, originally on here. And we're just gonna tuck this kind of right there. I never knew that spring wreaths could be so much fun. I usually only do them during the holidays, but y'all have just re-inspired me like nobody's business and I'm obsessed. 
Okay, there we go. And as you can see, I have no, um, I just, there's no, um, oh gosh, I haven't prepared on this. So there's, oh goodness, I'm trying to think of the word. There's no structure to this. Just kind of go, let the flowers poke out, lay them down, whatever. It just looks really cute. And you can make the section of flowers that you want to add much bigger. In fact, I may or may not add, or I may, yeah, or may not add more flowers. We'll just see once I get it completed. If I'm like, mm -mm, it needs more, we will add more. Okay, I'm just about done. And I am doing the lifting just because I wanted to make sure that I got all of the, the pipe cleaners covered that we had clipped. So I wanna do that. And uh, I've got those all covered, so I'm happy with that. And maybe just one last one up down there. So it looks like I might add more flowers because I'm like, ooh, let's do a bigger section of it. And then we'll add these last tulips down in there. All right, let's bring it back to a different angle. Okay, so here's the amount of flowers that I have on it right now. So I'm thinking I might add just a little bit more flowers to kind of come around to do more of the half moon shape. Can you guys see? It's just like one little section right here. So I may, but what the heck, let's just add them. I'm gonna do a couple more clips of my pipe cleaners and add more flowers and we'll work on that bow. So if you, or in the same pot where you're like, oh, I want to add more flowers. Feel free to do so. And we're gonna do more tulips. I ran out of the white ones. They're in my office, which I'm not even gonna worry about. So. All right. How are you guys liking your wreaths right now? Um, if you're creating them with me, um, I hope you're really enjoying them. Like, I hope you like you guys like how they're coming out right now. Okay, so we got our tulips. So I'm going to add just a few more tulips. Just a couple little happy tulips right here. Did you ever watch Bob Ross? <laughs> that was my reference to Bob Ross. Just a couple of happy little trees. My grandma used to watch Bob Ross. And so um, I have watched plenty of Bob Ross. All right, and. Ooh, getting too excited. All right, I hate that there's like the lull in the video, but I'm concentrating so hard on cutting these flowers that for some reason it's just taking all of my concentration. There we go, all right. All right, let's perk this video up. Okay, so there we go. And think yeah now I'm, I'm glad that I have added the flowers um, it definitely needed just a hair more to give it that little half moon shape that I was going for and this is what I'm talking about you can think you're gonna start one way and then um, end up doing something completely different which is totally okay All right, come on. Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it like that for right now because we're gonna work on our bow. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your wreath, you're gonna set it aside, and we're gonna bust out some ribbon. So you can see I did have some shedding of that mesh. 
but again, I'm okay with it. And I know we're gonna be adding the butterflies here in a minute. I just wanna make sure that when I'm adding my ribbon that it does not cover my, my butterflies. That is, that's the whole purpose of this wreath. So, all right, we're gonna get out our Bodabra. Let me grab that. And I am working with four ribbons and they're all different sizes in width. So I've got this cute, um, it's kind of like a peachy color. I've got this cute lace one right here. It's got like an eyelet um, edging. And mm, I know there's four. Let's find the fourth one. Oh, it fell. Okay, in the process of looking for this one, I was like, maybe we'll add a little green since we do have green on our wreath. We'll do, so that's five. So we've got five different ribbons. So this is gonna be like a gaudy, big, just over the top wreath. And all right, it's time for our Bodabra. So if you have a Bodabra, then you'll know how to use the, um, what section is for what. But if you're brand new, have a Bodabra, never used it before, or if you're wanting one, don't know how these work, here's how it goes. So you're gonna take either um, floral wire or a pipe cleaner or a string, whatever you want, and you're going to open these two sections right here, okay? These two sections. You're gonna take this, slide it between the two down to the very bottom like that and cover, or sorry, place one end behind there and then place the other, okay? Put it down, that's it. Now you're gonna put it this way. This part, this section, this section right here is where your fabric, your, your um, ribbon's gonna go. There is like a little um, thing that pushes your, your uh, ribbon down. I don't have it. I have really haven't had the need for it. So if you have that, then great, but we're not gonna use that today. Now I'm gonna look, this is what I like to do. I like to lay my ribbon out and kind of see how I want to layer it. I'm like, okay, what's gonna go where? Um, how do I want my bow to look? Super cute. Um, and then I think I'll do the skinny, skinny one for the very, very top. So I think I'll do green at the bottom, then this really cute, it's a really soft fabric too, then this polka dotted one, then this one, and then my striped one. I got all of this ribbon here at Michael's, all on clearance. Um, if you're looking for those these specific ones, I had to, I went in store and got them on clearance. Now for the length of our uh, bow, this is how I determine the length of the bow. I bring my wreath over. I want to have little hanging tails off my bow, so what I do is I take take this. Fold it in half like this. I know the camera angle is kind of funny. And then I want to see how long does it, like how long do I want it? I only like it to hang from the top to the, um, to here, let me just try to explain. Ah, this is how I, the length that I like. So I like it to go from the top. I'm gonna move this camera up. Okay, so I like to hang it from the top right here, because it's gonna hang from the bottom just till it touches the um, mesh below it. So that's the length that I like to go for. You can go for long, flowy tails if you like. Um, sometimes I really like that, but for today, we're just gonna do that. Uh, or I'm going to do that length. So that is a total of, let's see. That is gonna be a total of 26 inches. Each leg, each like little dangly part is gonna be 13 inches. So 26 in total. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut my 13 inches. Now you can use your roller cutter, you can use a pair of scissors. And make sure that all of your ribbon is wired ribbon. All right, so I have this. I'm going to 
fold it in half like this, and then fold it again like this, and we're gonna cut fancy little ducktails. So I'm gonna take my scissors, start from the center, and you're gonna cut towards the outer edge to get the ducktail. All right, so like that. So that's when you open it up, that's what it's gonna look like. So we're gonna take our very first piece, we're gonna bring our bodabra back over, and we're gonna find the center of our piece right here. Just fold it in half, make sure you got the center. And open it up, place that center, place it directly down there like that, okay? And that is your first tail piece for your bow. Now, what we're gonna do with this, I'm going to take this, I'm gonna give it a couple of inches because I wanna make sure that the um, there's enough right here so when I wrap it, it'll hold tight. So I'm gonna give it a couple of inches. I'm just gonna tuck this down into my bodabra like this. Now, if you have only single-sided ribbon, which means that only one side of the ribbon is printed like this. So one side is fancy, the other side is not. Fancy, no fancy. Make sure that this is up because um, that's how it's going to look when you bring it, when you do your bow. So do this side. So this side would technically be down. This side would be down because that's how it's gonna start and then you're gonna flip it up. I'll show you when I go to this ribbon. So that side's right there. Now I want to make a bow. I wanna make one of my loops. So determine how big you want your loop. I think that's good. And then going to, sorry guys. So then I'm going to twist while it's in the center. This is why it's so awesome to have a bodabra because it holds it for you. And then it allows you to do all of these fun things. Um, and then you're gonna do that side. How I like to make sure that my bows, because we're not really measuring, but how you're just kind of eyeing it. How I like to make sure that my bows, my loops are perfectly equal. Press them up together against the bodabra. Boom, they're equal, okay? And I think because I have five ribbons, I'm gonna leave it at one, what the heck, let's do two. <coughs> Excuse me, I got so excited. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and do another one. Just met, you know, use your first bow for measurement, like that. Make sure you're flipping that, and then do one more for that. This is just gonna be a big, big poofy bow, which is gonna be so awesome. All right, so then they're both even. So now I'm gonna cut, and when you cut, make sure you're still leaving a little bit of a, of a couple of like, maybe like an inch to um, be able to secure it when you bring up your pipe cleaner, your uh, whatever wire, whatever it is that you're using to hold down. Okay, so now that I've got that, that is my base. This is gonna be at the very bottom of my bow. All right, now I want to do this one. Now again, remember, this is only a one-sided ribbon, so this is how it works. Kind of unroll it a little bit. You're gonna uh, put this in with the pretty side down. Make sure you're giving it some room to give. Put it face down like that. Determine the uh, size of your loop. I want it to stay the same size as my green one, so I'm just gonna use that one for reference. So you go like that, um, pinch this together, put it down. Now here's where it's important that you twist your ribbon because now you want to have this side twist to where it's laid down. See, this side's up, that side's down, and then do it again. But with this one, instead of doing two, I'm just gonna do the one. So I'm gonna pinch that one down. Oh, goodness gracious, I just, <sighs> stop. <laughs> Oh goodness, okay. Well, I already know I have my bow. I'm not gonna unravel this. I already know this is what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut, you know, the inch. I forgot to do my little tails. Okay, so that, I'm just gonna kind of tuck that to the side. I've got, this is wired ribbon, so when you squish it together, it'll still, it might come up undone a little bit, but you'll see, um, you'll see where your marks are. Um, I'm gonna measure my, do the 26, Again, I forgot my little tails. So we're gonna do 13. Let's 
one of the most important parts. I'm so glad I remembered that. Okay, so we're gonna cut that. This is almost like a corduroy center. Can you guys see that? It's super soft. I wanna say it's like corduroy. I've never, vintage, vintage, vintage blush rose antique. Interesting, very fancy. Um, very cute too. <laughs> Honest to God, I only bought it because it was on clearance, but I love it. Okay, so now I have my tail for that one. And now I'm gonna lay, find the center. All right, pinch, we're gonna add this. All right, there we go. Now it's pretty. Grab our bow that we had started, just tuck that back down in there. Um, just to make sure my bows are still equal, I can tell that they're not. So that's why I was like, let's readjust down. Okay, twist. All right, now we're now we're talking. Okay, there we go. All right. So squish it down. This is where if you have that tool, you'll just use that to squish it down. Then we're gonna do a layer of this. Now I remembered that we're doing the thirteen. And 13. Um, okay, we're gonna do our tails again. Fold in half. Now, as we do, um, we get to the, um, I'm gonna start doing my bows a little bit smaller than my original size. like then the pink and then that green. We're gonna start to get smaller and smaller and smaller. So I want to do, okay, so this again is a one-sided color. I'm gonna do it like a half inch shorter than my other ones. So do that one. I have to make sure that I flip this and we're gonna go back through with this kind of, eyeball it, but then bring it up for measure. Okay. Make sure you're leaving the, at least an inch. There we go. Tuck that to the side. Oh, this is going to be so cute. If, and I always say if it works out the way I have it in my mind, because it doesn't always come out the way that I planned. But if you could see what I have in my mind, you know it's gonna be gorgeous. All right, there we go, right here. Okay. Do this one more time. I am keeping, even though my my um, bows are getting smaller, I am keeping my tails the same length. I'm still doing the uh, 13 inches on each side. So I just wanna let you guys know that. I'm not changing that one out. All right, so this is gonna be, ooh, pretty. This is gonna be, again, a little bit smaller than the other one. So this one is not, a, let's see. Yeah, it kind of is a single-sided because the, the way the seam is on here. Um, place that down and then let's see where my blue one, or my, I don't know why I said blue. My brown one, so I'm gonna do a little bit smaller right there. I'm still gonna twist it and then bring it back up this way. Okay, perfect. This Bodabra is getting really full here with all this ribbon, but super, super excited. All right. Now, last but definitely not least, we are doing the stripe. Now this is a completely, it's way smaller. These ribbons that I, the other ribbons are two and a half inches. Um, let's see. Yes, they're all two and a half, except for this one that I am working with. It's gonna be a 1.5 inches. So again, same length when it comes to the tails. Right here. And then do this, 
even with the little one. And as you can see, this is a, also a single-sided uh, ribbon. I think most of them are just the one side print. Um, see like this, pr uh, printed, non-printed, so. All right, there we go. And then last but not least, we're gonna do a little bow. All right. And how cute, please, 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 please come out the way it is in my mind. <laughs> All right, there we go. And a little bit, oh, too cute. Okay, super excited. Hmm. All righty, cut that one. All right, da, 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 da. it's time to see. So now, okay, again, if you have that tool, then you, you know how to work it. I'm using my fingers. So now we're gonna loosen those pipe cleaners. So I have them, let me keep my finger there. So I have them right here. Here's one piece, there's the other. So I'm gonna bring the pipe cleaners together. Now, as you do that, it's going to lift your fabric, your, your ribbon up. So as it's lifting, you're gonna tr be very talented and tie it together as it's lifting as well with your wire, string, whatever. Good Lord, Sandra. <laughs> it's got a lot, so I'm gonna squish it down just to make sure it's really tight, nothing's gonna come loose. Um, I'm gonna pinch it, like squeeze it like this, and then just keep twisting my pipe cleaners um, until I have it really secure. And if you could see my face, I'm making all these funny faces trying to secure it. All right, now, I've got this. I'm gonna secure it again, I'm gonna pull it around back. Now because of the thickness of my ribbon, the it only leaves me yay much, but I'll still show you how to attach it. Okay, so there, there we go. Now what I'm going to go ahead and do is while it's laying like this, I wanna go ahead and fluff it. I wanna readjust all of this into fluffy, bows. So I'm going to open this up and open this up. Do that with all of it. Um, as long as you have it secured in your wire, um, nice and tight, you'll be able to move this around without having it come loose. So go ahead and start fluffing. And then this is just to kind of pre-fluff. Once it gets onto the wreath, then you can really start to fluff it. Um, Make your bows go in any direction that you want. Um, there are, again, I'm gonna say it, there are no wrong ways to do this. Um, I just, whatever direction I have it going in, I like to make sure that the same one is going in the opposite direction. And yes, it will just be exploding. Um, and if you have, see like this one, See how that comes out like that? I might, I'm gonna cut that down, but I'm not gonna do it just yet. I wanna make sure that I've got it all fluffed. I don't wanna you know, do anything real fast and hasty when I'm still you know, adjusting and whatnot and I haven't even gotten it attached. <gasps> Look at this, Doo -doo -doo. Um, super cute. I haven't even gotten it attached to the wreath yet. So, and I did double on the green because I kind of wanted it to go into like an X. So that's what I'm working on right now. So there we go. I, the only part that I ever, that I see is right there, which, you know, depending on how I can um, really just like fluff this up, it might not even be an issue. I might not have to cut it. So that's why I'm not worried about it right this second. Oh goodness. I love it. All right, this is the gaudy, look at me, I'm about spring bow. 
There we go. And see how all the little hangy things are so cute. So now we're going to bring our wreath over. And remember, I did say that I was going to show you how to attach this even when you run out of space on here. I'm gonna go grab some wire and I'll be right back. Okay, I went back and got some really heavy duty um, floral wire. So we're gonna cut this and I'm gonna take this wire right here and then just find the original center and then just wrap it around that way and cut this and the small part of the pipe here off that was still there. Okay, so and this would also give it some extra um, um, hold. Okay, so there we go. So now we've got our bow. And like I said, this is just like a pre-fluff because we're gonna add it to our wreath. So I decided that I wanted to have the flowers on the side. That was my plan. And then I'm gonna do, <laughs> wow, Sanjay went all out for this bow. <laughs> I love it. So <laughs> I'm gonna do it towards the top. So it'll be bow and then flowers all the way, all the way around, okay? Now, I'm gonna cut a couple more of my pipe cleaners down where I'm gonna put my bow, since I know I'm not gonna need this, the, the extra, the excess anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off, tuck that behind. All right, so I've cut that off. Now I'm just going to thread it through, okay and adhere it to the frame. Once I get it on, I'm gonna show you what I did. And again, I'm not gluing anything down in case I'm not happy with the placement of this bow or I change my mind towards the end, I'm still able to re, you know, put it somewhere else. So I'm just gonna do a couple of, you know, not super tight, I don't like to go, to do anything official until I'm really sure. So there we go. All right, now I can go back through, readjust, refluff, put my little tails down. I like to have them go in all kinds of directions, get crazy with it. And see, when I got it on here and then start fluffing, you don't see that one little piece um, that I thought I needed to cut off. All right, there we go. Oh, that's a tail. I was like, oh goodness, my thing is coming unraveled. Okay. All right, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. There we go. And I know the camera angle's kind of funky, but I'm gonna back up just enough and can you guys see that? I love it. I love, 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 love it. So I now that I'm seeing this right here, I might do a few touch-ups with some extra flowers right there. But other than that, I'm super happy with it. Oh my goodness. So this is probably where it's going to go. Um, I'm going to still not glue anything down just yet. And now it's time for our little uh, nature um pieces that we're gonna be putting on here. Again, I'm gonna bring the camera to where you guys can see it, and let's do this. Okay, so because I made my bow extra um, fluffy, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the rest of my twist ties and fluff up, fluff up my wreath and get it all cutesies and whatnot. And I'll tell you a little secret that I do. Now, if my ruffles do not stay in the position that I want them to, I will actually glue, uh, glue them together. What I mean is I will take a little bit of my glue, take a little bit of hot glue, 
and glue two of these together so they'll become friends and it won't budge. And also, if you have used different color, like I got bright orange on this thing right here, um, and the pipe cleaners do show, but I'm going to hide that here in just a moment with a little bit of creativity, which I will show. All right, I think I got all of my pipe cleaners. Now, if you've gone all the way around your wreath with flowers, um, you don't have to worry about this, but where, so this is gonna be like my top part, okay. So where we have our showing, look at this cute, sweet little baby bird. I'm going to place him in an area where you can see the pipe cleaner, kind of place it over. Now I don't want my bow to cover him. So I'm going to do it like so, right there. Um, no, maybe right there. So, so it's far enough away from the bow to where you can still see this. So let's, this is super delicate. Um, very, very cute. Let me just trying to, there it goes. All right, so I'm gonna add a little bit of hot glue. Let me just make sure, okay, it's where I want it. Gotta really glue up this bottom. And I'm going to tuck it right into the opening of that section right there. Now let me get my butterflies. Now these butterflies have pins, so I'm just gonna ever so carefully remove the butterflies off of here with their pins. I'm not going to, oh, there's a little tape. I'm not going to remove them from the pins. I'm just going to leave them like that. But of course we're going to glue. All right. I have never used these butterflies before on a wreath, but they're so incredibly pretty that I'm just like, oh, okay. And I love the color pink. Ugh. Just be careful when you're removing them because that's, okay, there we go. Maybe I should have done this pre-video. There we go. All right, see, there's like a super long pin on that. Um, I'm gonna leave most of it on there because I, if I, I'm terrified if I pull that, it will actually destroy the butterfly. Now it's time to glue the little belly on our wreath. Oh my goodness. Okay. I know I instantly want to lift it up, but I got to make sure that the butterfly is dry. <gasps> Look at that. Look at that. Oh my goodness. I always get excited when I get towards the end of my wreath making because when it starts to really come together and it's exactly, if not exactly, but better than I had pictured it, I'm just like, oh, thank you, Jesus. Um, it looks so cute. I'm so happy. And these sweet little um, butterflies just really do it. Um, goodness, super excited. And they do have, so I might keep this, <laughs> this one for myself, but they do have other butterflies, um, bigger butterflies at the dollar store. And they do have pink ones and whatnot. I just might head down there after I do this video to grab some more butterflies because they're just so stinking cute. Um, I just love them. All right, and I think, 
think, think, I might add some more flowers. I keep saying that, but I, I really do love the flowers and all of that on here. Um, the little baby bird's nest kind of by itself. So we'll see. We'll see how many butterflies. So cute. Do them in all different directions. Ooh, go. Blue got me there. Um, and who's gonna be looking at your pipe cleaners when you've got these super stinking cute uh, butterflies on your wreath? All right, I cannot wait for you guys to see this. I can't wait to lift this up and show you what this is all about. Do one right there. Okay. Here's I'm going to show you where how why I'm thinking of adding more flowers and where I've placed the butterflies. Just in case you were following along um, to a T, uh, just get this out of the way, and I'll prop that camera up. Let's do this. Hello. Oh my goodness. Okay, so see how the baby bird is all by itself, even though I think it's so stinking adorable. I'm gonna add more flowers up there. And then I think I might do like have them trail off up to the baby bird. Does that make sense? Okay. So when I say tra trail off, I'm just gonna do a couple probably do like there's a oh there you go with like the long stems and the greenery that's what I'm thinking about doing just so it doesn't look like oh why is that random bird there it doesn't belong to anything okay and I like these little wispy flowers so this will do the trick and this will also again cover up any pipe cleaners that you may see or whatnot. Okay. And yes, we were going in that direction. You're definitely gonna need a lot of glue when you're, when you're doing this kind of stuff. You can get the um, hot glue at the dollar store is the one that I like to get. I just grab a pack. Um, but yes, you will go through quite a bit of it. So just keep that in mind. So before you start a project, that's like the one thing you don't want to run out of because that's what's going to hold everything together. So <laughs> you kind of need it. All right. Okay. Just get this all tucked. Oh. More flowers than I had anticipated on, but I am not mad about it. I love flowers. I have fake flowers all through my house, um, and I have them for every season. No joke. I just love them. Um, I love real flowers too, but you know, they eventually fade and whatnot, and I just like to have the flowers all the time. And plus, real flowers can be very expensive. Okay. One more tulip. Oh, hey, Doki. All right. I'm so happy with it. All right, we are getting closer to the baby bird, although, oh, hold on, okay. So there we go. 
we are getting closer to the baby bird. Let me get on my tippy toes. See how I'm like, I did a bunch up here and then we're slowly trailing off. And I'm gonna add one more little bunch. I just don't have, oh, I do. I like um, right here. Again, what I said we were gonna start out with is not what we're ending up with, which is perfectly fine with me. How cute. Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to get the camera in a good angle and just show you what we did today. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, let's, let's do it one more time. Ta -ta -ta -ta. Ta -ta -ta -ta. I love it. And remember, I thought we were gonna add ribbon around here, but because we did such a gaudy bow, um, we don't need the ribbon. Oh my goodness. What's not to love about this? But maybe some bigger, some big um, butterflies now. <sighs> Ugh. So in love, thank y'all for suggesting the butterflies. I love, love, love. Two, two, two. This is what we've got. I'm so excited. All right, here she is. Here she is. So I put her up on a stand. Yes, my wreath is a her. And I'm going to add a little bit more white because remember I ran out of the white flowers and I wanted to just add a little bit of pop, pops of the, the white in here. Um, can you, and these, this wreath stand that I got, I got it at Michael's. Um, they are about five bucks, but because they are, I've not really ever seen them on sale. So you can use your 20% co uh, off coupon for them. I'm just gonna kind of turn it like this. All right. Do a couple around the little bird to kind of make it look inclusive. There we go. How is that? Super, super cute. I love it. All right, let me just add just a couple of more flowers and we're gonna call this wreath a day. There we go. That's it. It's a day. As always, I'm so excited about our wreath that we completed today. I absolutely love this. Super excited. I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. Again, I know for some people that are advanced, it can seem a little long, but this is for that person that has never made a wreath before or is like, I need you guys to explain it step by step. So that's what this video is created for. Um, but I'm super excited, I love it. Um, and always, if you guys are loving the channel and you guys are loving the content that I'm putting out, please subscribe to my channel. Um, all you have to do is go over to my page, hit that sub the subscribe button, and then make sure that you're hitting that notification bell so you're notified every time I upload a wreath video like this or something else. But um, make sure that you like this video if you found it helpful, useful, informative, all of those great things, um, because that lets me know that you're liking the content that I'm putting out there for you guys. Um, other than that, I'm super excited that we completed another wreath. Round of applause. And um, yeah, more to come, definitely with different styles, um, different techniques, different decorations. I'm reading the comments. Believe me, I'm bringing it all to you guys. So uh, other than that, have a fabulous week, and I will see you guys again in my next video.